Hello everyone and welcome back to my channel. I hope you guys are all doing really well. In today's video, we are going to talk about how to achieve healthy and glowy skin and the steps that I personally take for better skin. But first, I just wanna to talk to you about something that I've recently learned about that you may not have heard of that is absolutely crucial to understanding how to get better and healthier skin. And that is the skin's microbiome. You may have heard me talk about the gut microbiome in other videos, but what exactly is the skin's microbiome? Well, the skin microbiome is the term used to describe millions of different organisms, bacteria, viruses, yeasts, and fungi that live on the human skin. The skin microbiome is the genetic material of all of these microbes put together. There are over a thousand species of bacteria and up to 80 different fungi species living on the skin that have been identified with research ongoing. Skin conditions such as eczema, acne, and rosacea are believed to be connected to a lack of diversity on the skin's microbiome. Over the years, more and more people have been reporting skin conditions such as eczema and psoriasis. Let's just get right into some of the things that you can do to improve the health and the look of your skin. Number one, improve your gut health. They say good skin starts from within, and it is so important to look after our internal environment as well as our external environment. So now that we have learned a little bit about the skin's microbiome, it's time to see how maintaining our internal microbiome is just as important for our skin's health as well as many other things. So new research shows that we have a gut to skin axis. In other words, anything that is damaging our gut microbiome can negatively impact our skin's health as well. The skin is very often a good barometer for what's going on inside. Some scientists believe that one of the major causes of acne is actually poor gut health. And studies have linked nearly all skin conditions to the gut, such as rashes, breakouts, and eczema. So how exactly can we improve our gut health? Well, I have actually made an entire video on this topic. In the video, I explain all the steps that I personally took to achieve better gut health and heal my gut. I will link that below and I definitely recommend that you guys go and watch that. The second tip I have is to stop using so many skincare products. This is probably a controversial point, but it's one that I feel I need to make. Most skincare products are laced with harsh chemicals, which can damage something we have called the skin barrier. And they also throw the skin's microbiome way out of whack. So this is because the chemicals can actually change the behavior of the skin and therefore the bugs and the bacteria that live on it. Bacteria that would otherwise regulate the skin's natural barrier. So the skin's barrier is a watertight seal that keeps the outermost layers of the skin smoothly together. But if these outer layers are damaged, the skin may appear dull, feel rough or dry. When the skin's barrier becomes damaged or impaired, it loses or becomes unable to hold onto the vital substances that keep the skin cells intact. Substances such as ceramides, cholesterol and fatty acids like linoleic acid. So this leads to water loss and skin becoming more vulnerable to all external aggressors such as pollution. So one thing that I personally did a few years ago was completely minimize my skincare routine as much as I possibly could. I also switched to using natural and gentle alternatives. For example, for moisturizer, argan oil, jojoba oil, and even olive oil are great alternatives to moisturizers. Alternatively, you can use a moisturizer that is fortified with good bacteria to help support and maintain the skin's natural barrier. Definitely avoid exfoliators and scrubs as these can cause micro tears to the skin's surface. My recommendation is to use water and a gentle cloth to wash your face. This is what I do every single day. If anything, doing this will save you a lot of money and also save your skin. If you really want to use soap, again, look for natural and gentle alternatives. One other thing I quickly wanna mention on this point is about the skin's pH and how soap can affect the pH of your skin. Soap is very alkalizing by nature. That is how it works to remove dirt and microbes. But you need to bear in mind that the skin microbiome prefers a pH of about five 
and that is relatively acidic. My third tip is to drink and use the right kind of water. Tap water is absolutely laced with chemicals and pollutants that are harmful to us and harmful to our skin. Most of our water has been through a water treatment plant. While this creates technically clean water and helps prevent waterborne diseases, it really creates a whole new concoction along with a long list of chemicals and additives that bring small foreign particles into our bodies. So for example, chlorine, which is present in tap water, is easily absorbed by the skin. And there has been a lot of research around chlorine and the negative health effects it has on us. Chlorine kills the bad bacteria on our skin, but it also kills the good bacteria too. It also depletes the natural oils that hold in moisture, leading to dry skin. Chlorine has also been shown to accelerate the aging process, similar to that of sun damage. The best thing you can do for your health right now is to change the water that you're drinking. And even better yet, filter the water that you're using to wash yourself with every day. So one of the things you can do is install a filter to your tap or shower head to help remove some of the pollutants in the water. When it comes to drinking water, get a water filtering device. Or even better yet, if you can afford it, buy a water distiller or reverse osmosis system. One quick thing I do want to note is that if you are using a distiller, don't forget to add the electrolytes back in by using Himalayan salt. So that was my third tip. Be aware of the water that you're using on your skin and the water that you're drinking and putting into your body. So my tip number four is to expose your skin to a little bit of sunshine every single day. I do think that these days the sun gets a really bad rep, especially when it comes to the skin. But this is actually a problem because your skin and your body really, really needs sunlight. Our skin is technically designed to be exposed to the sun's light. Sun reacts with cholesterol in our skin to create healthy chain reactions that are used throughout the body. Full spectrum sunlight activates the penile gland, stimulates hormone production, regulates circadian rhythms, and so much more. Not being out in the sun's light also stops the body's production of vitamin D. And vitamin D is such a key component to your health. Vitamin D is a really key component for bone growth and calcium levels in the body. And it also helps regulate high blood pressure. I just wanna quickly say, however, it is very, very important that you do not ever burn your skin. Best practice is to go out in the morning when the sun's rays aren't harsh and get your skin exposed to the sun for 10 to 15 minutes. Alternatively, if you live in a country that you don't get much sunlight like I do in England, I would definitely recommend taking a vitamin D supplement. My fifth tip for better skin is to incorporate red light therapy into your skincare regime. You might be wondering, what is red light therapy? Well, red light therapy involves exposing the body to low wavelength red light. This red light is natural and can penetrate deep into the skin where your cells and specifically your mitochondria can absorb and use it. Mitochondria are the powerhouse of your cells. Mitochondria are essentially what gives your body energy through something called ATP. I will talk more about that in another video. So the mitochondria in your skin cells absorb these light particles from the red light. This can help the cells to produce more adenosine triphosphate or ATP. And ATP is the energy source for all of your cells. Red light therapy has been shown to improve your skin's health in many ways, including increasing collagen production, increasing circulation between blood and tissue cells, protecting cells from damage, and even the reduction of fine lines and wrinkles. Red light therapy has many other health benefits. I highly recommend reading The Ultimate Guide to Red Light Therapy by Ari Witten to learn more about it. Red light has also been shown to increase collagen production in the skin. And I know there are a lot of collagen supplements out there that are derived from animals' bones. And of course, if you're vegan, that is not really what you wanna be taking. So I prefer to get my collagen naturally through it being produced in my body. And one of the ways I do this is using my red light therapy panel. I personally invested in a red light therapy panel recently for home use. So this is my red light therapy device. And I use this every single day on my skin. And also if I have any aches or pains, I use it as a spot treatment for those areas. I will sit in front of this, like this, with the lights shining on my face, 
and you have to wear these goggles to protect your eyes as the light is quite strong. This gives off red light and infrared light and infrared light penetrates even deeper than the red light waves. Now this panel is from Care Lamps which is a UK based company. They very kindly provided me with a discount code that you guys can use if you buy one of their red light panels. And I will leave that in the description below. So I use my red light panel every single day for 10 to 15 minutes and I will shine it directly onto my face, of course wearing the goggles to protect my eyes. And that's one of the things that I do to get better, healthier and glowing skin. Okay, so those were all of my tips on how to achieve healthier, better and glowy skin. I really hope you guys enjoyed this video. It was a little bit different to what we normally do here on this channel. But if you did like it, then please do leave me a like and let me know in the comments below what you want to see more of. Thank you so much for watching. I really do appreciate it. And I am looking forward to seeing you guys in the next video. Bye.